Okay gents, welcome to Johnny's Workshop, uh, aka the spare bedroom today. Uh, I've been asked by a few, few of the lads in the club uh, exactly what I'm playing at with the CNC machine that I, uh, I hope to build. So I thought today I'll do a quick video just to put you in the picture and to give you some ideas how the CNC is going to work and what it's going to do etc. So uh, here we have the basic kit. I've got all the bits from Japan and eBay etc. Uh, first of all, these are the two rails of the machine. This is the Y rail. and Basically this is the backbone of the machine. It's a 2040 extrusion uh, rail, aluminium, with a V, V track. Um, like I say, that's the backbone of the machine. And then we've got the 2020 um, V rail. This is for the X axis of the machine. Basically, the X axis will run along the Y axis in that sort of a fashion. Um, that's how the machine moves. And then there's a cutter head on this rail that will move backwards and forwards and uh, actually cut the sheet. What I intend to cut is this sheet of foam board, which is a full size A1 sheet. Uh, like so, that'll sit on a, a table like that. You've got your rail on your machine here that will slide up and down there. And then you've got your cutter head that will go backwards and forwards. Obviously a combination of the two moves will give you the, the shapes that it's going to cut out. So that gives you a sort of an insight of what we're going to do. I'm going to have to chop this, this down, obviously it's too long, but uh, it comes in metre length, so, so that's it. Um, that's roughly how it works so what I want to do now is just show you the hardware that I've bought from Japan from my friend Edward it's all in this box I'll take you through what's in it first of all there's a USB cable USB plug the one end the other plug will plug into your machine into the audio board uh, basically it's a data transfer to transfer your program over to your machine so nothing special with that one. Uh, next is a bag of electronics if we open this up and have a look what's inside oops dropped a bit so what have we got first of all the main brain of the machine is this. This is the Ordinio Uno board. Basically it's an experimental board for these sort of electronic geeky type people who sort of make projects uh, perhaps switching lights on, test equipment, heating requirements, things like this. Um, basically you can flash this board with a program and it, it's going to do what you're going to want it to do basically. Obviously I'm going to um, flash it with CNC firmware to operate my machine. The next up is the CNC shield. Uh, this controls the stepper motors. Um, that actually piggybacks, it's got foam backing on at the moment, but it fits onto the top of this like so, with these pins top and bottom here, and connects to make one unit. Um, if you turn it on its side, I don't know if I'm in the right place here, but you can see the top socket is for the you know the USB data transfer lead. Uh, the bottom one is the power input, which is just basically a 12 volt input that's uh, used from a laptop. You know those black uh, transformer boxes that you have on your laptops. I'll show you that later. I'll just drop that over there. Some jumper pins that we'll need. Um, just some cable tidy stuff, nothing serious there, just bits of uh, plastic to keep it all neat. Power lead from the power supply. Some more cables that uh, fit onto the stepper motors um, to join that up to the CNC Uno. Uh, power lead for the motor. Some 22 gauge wire, silicon wire. Um, a couple of extension leads, so I think they're about a metre long, just the same sort of thing that you have in, in your aeroplane, in your wings or whatever. 
Um, got a hardware bag with all the nuts and bolts and everything that I require. Quite a few in there. Another hardware bag with the, the actual runner wheels. These are quite nice actually. If I can open the bag. He says. Get one of those out. It's a hard plastic wheel that's uh, actually chamfered on the edges there. And that will run in the rail there. Obviously the machine's got to move nice and smoothly, uh, but with no play in the axis. So obviously that's going to give us a, a false reading, a false cut if you like. So it's going to be a nice smooth motion with no play. Um, obviously there's a bearing in the middle as well. So they're, they're a nice wheel. Um, also in here is a pulley wheel, which goes onto the stepper motor. I don't know if you can see that there, if I sort of bring it close. It's castellated in the middle to take the castellated belt. Obviously to stop it from slipping, we don't want that. We've got the drive belt here, which is castellated on the inside, a bit like the cam belt on your car. So obviously you, you don't want any slippage of the belts. That's, that's what that's all about. Um, we've got three MIG welding tips. You might ask yourself what that's for. You might have come across these in the past uh, on your welding machines exactly the same uh, only I'm using it as a support for the needle the needle is uh, 0.8 diameter stainless wire that will run inside the MIG tip so the MIG tip is supporting it right at the very point to stop the the needle from wandering as it's cutting that's the the idea behind that I hope that works I'm not sure um, we've got a normal um, electric motor that you'd have on your your RC plane speed controller there that is to drive the actual cutter that's uh, going to do do the business hopefully uh, I've got one of those cheap cheapo servo testers we've all come across these in the past no doubt with a nine kilogram servo this is the servo is to lift the Z, the Z axis up and down so once it's uh, finished its cut over this side of the board, it'll want to lift the cutter out of the way so it can drive over to the other side of the board, drop down, continuing cutting whatever it's doing. So that's for the, the Z axis. Um, the survey tester, by the way, is to control the speed of the motor as well. Um, next up is uh, just a bag of grease, really. A couple of Allen keys, a spanner, some Loctite to hold everything together then we've got the power pack like I say similar to what you have on your laptop nothing special there just a 12 volt and then we've got the business end uh, the stepper motors these are NEMA 17s which are basically the smallest stepper motors that you you probably see to be honest used on 3d printers etc um, the nice motors actually um, really compact Quite powerful for the size, uh, surprisingly powerful for the size to be fair, and uh, also very accurate on the amount that they turn. Um, so we've got two of those. My friend uh, Edward in Japan calls them uh, stepper motor. So I've got two stepper motors. Thank you very much, Edward. So that's basically it. That's all, all the bits really. Um, my good friend Patrick has been good enough to print all my plastic parts in the bags and my first job is to uh, get these end plates and actually screw it onto the ends, screw uh, drill and tap the ends of the, the 2040, put these end plates on, one on each end and that will be the basis of the machine. Uh, as you can see that will sit on the table like so um, I'm going to uh, do this first because that's basically the first part of the build and it holds it off the table when I finished the actual uh, build I'm going to construct a proper table for it so it's dedicated to the machine um, the Y rail will screw you know with the end brackets will screw onto the table so it's a solid job purpose built so that's what I intend to do there so my first job I've got to do is to tap uh, 
the two holes out M5. I'm not quite sure if they are the tapping size for M5. I'll have to measure that, but uh, if not, I'll drill it out to suit. So drill and tap that, put the end plates on, and that will be the start of the machine. So that's about it for now for video one. If you are interested in the build, uh, give us a shout or a thumbs up, and uh, I'll do some more videos as we go along. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little insight, and um, you stay safe, guys, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.